Before I get into this review, I want to give a quick shout out to Coach Kev, aka Purpose Driven. He's another fellow YouTube creator, but he makes awesome content relating to his life as a basketball coach, but also talks a lot about how the game of basketball transcends into learning valuable life lessons and building meaningful relationships. He left me a comment not too long ago on my previous video asking to do a review on these Puma basketball sneakers right there. So here's my take on the review, and I really hope I did this review justice. Without further ado, let's do a fade transition into the review. Bruh. What's up, YouTube? For today's video, I thought I'd share my thoughts and do a performance review on these Puma Clyde Hardwood basketball sneakers. If you didn't catch it, I did a video on Black Friday where I talked about some really good sneaker deals, and I actually ended up copying these for over 50% off. Unfortunately, with the pandemic and social distancing, we're still not quite able to play full-on 5-on-5 basketball quite yet. At least here where I am in Southern California, a lot of the courts near my house anyway are prohibiting people from playing more than two or three people per court. So with that, I haven't quite gotten a chance to go back to full recreational play. Uh, in terms of this performance review, it'll be more based on me just doing a bunch of drills, conditioning, shooting around, and very casual workouts and things like that. I did have a chance to break these in for a solid four or five workout days, so I feel like that's enough for me to have a good first impression of the shoe. Just a disclaimer, I'll also admit that I'm not quite a great basketball player. I just play for fun, obviously, and I really haven't shot around or played a full-on game since like even before Bruh. March. So just keep that in mind as I go over my Bruh. thoughts on this shoe. So with this review, I want to talk Bruh. about pretty much the pros, the cons, talk about fit and sizing, and then at the end, give an overall impression of the shoe. So as I get into this review, please give this video a thumbs up. It'll really help me out a lot. But with that being said, let's talk about the pros of these sneakers first. Pro number one is aesthetics. I just love the silhouette of this sneaker. If you didn't know, the Clyde basketball sneaker has really been around for a long time now, a good couple of decades actually. And Puma just figured out a way to just kind of recently re-innovate or revive this sneaker into a more modernized silhouette, but it still definitely gives off that retro vibe and I'm really digging it. This sneaker really has a rich history. I'm not really gonna get into that, but as of recently, they came out with a handful of different colorways and I really like every single one of them so far. And again, this one being 50% off, I just couldn't pass on that deal aesthetic wise. They look great on feet, but let me know what you guys think about this silhouette. Pro number two is four foot reinforcement. At least for me, when I was running in these and doing drills in these, I just felt really locked in in my forefoot area. As you can see by the upper of the shoe, it's pretty much made of uh, this mesh material in the toe box area. And really it's minimal in terms of the lacing system. You just have these two golden lace loops. And there's also a suede patch just along the lateral side of the pinky area. I'm guessing to also help with that lateral reinforcement. But really again, the toe box or forefoot area is minimal, but it really worked for me anyway. I just felt really locked in and I didn't have any issues with pivoting, cutting, and turning. Pro number three is great traction. There's something crazy about this traction pattern that really just worked for me. I was trying to analyze this traction pattern for the longest time and it's just, there's a lot of different patterns and lines going on here. But for the most part, of course, with basketball, you're pretty much on your midfoot and forefoot a lot because you're either sprinting or jumping or on your toes, really. So uh, analyzing that part anyway, you have the standard herringbone pattern along the midfoot but also on the forefoot, but it's uh, going perpendicular in the direction that you would be cutting, which again, kind of goes along my point number two that I had really good forefoot reinforcement with like quick turns and sharp cuts and pivots. But yeah, a lot of other stuff going on like these diamond shapes on the midfoot also, and then this other kind of triangles, I guess, on the heel part. But again, it all just worked out for me and I felt really well grounded on the floor. Granted, I did play these outdoors only. I don't know how this traction pattern would hold up indoors. Um, so I can't give you any insight on that, but at least for outdoor courts, it felt really good. Just another note, I am five foot eight, so my style of gameplay is definitely more of that point guard type of role. I'm either pushing the ball or I'm forced to defend the shortest and or the fastest guy on the court. So again, I'm on my toes a lot. I'm doing a lot of quick turns and sprints. So that's how it applies to my game. And I think that's why, again, this four foot traction pattern really worked for me. So those were the main pros of these kicks. But now let's talk about the cons. Con number one is the fit. For these shoes right here, I went true to size and it worked well for the forefoot part of the shoe, but the midfoot part ran pretty snug, at least in my opinion. 
Throughout the break-in period, I was really getting this uncomfortable pinching or really snug fit both on the medial and the lateral side of the shoe. After breaking them in, it did feel a little better, but again, after four or five days of working out, I'm still getting that, especially when I'm uh, working out on these for a long period of time. The way this lacing system works though is that I guess with these eye stays right here, you have the ability to kind of try to loosen it up here, but I still try to loosen this part up as much as I could, but it didn't quite fix the problem. I was still again getting a pretty tight snug or a little bit of an ache or pinch right along there. So my recommendation is that if you have really wide feet, these shoes probably won't feel great on you. Uh, either size up half or a whole or don't get these. <laughs> if your feet run narrow, then these will probably work a lot better for you. My foot, I would say I'm pretty much in the middle. I'm not too wide, but not too narrow. And I was still getting a little bit of discomfort with true to size. The other con I wanna bring up is the cushioning. The cushioning on these is very average, very meh very underwhelming. What they use is a technology called Pro Foam, and at least when I'm holding it in hand and trying to do that pinch test or squeeze test, it actually feels very firm. With this cushioning, I just feel like I did not have much shock absorption and or much bounce. Granted, I don't have hops to begin with anyways, but if I had to compare these to the uh, James Harden's, which is my other basketball shoe, those obviously have boost. It feels a lot more forgiving when I'm landing from a jump. With these, again, no bounce, just feels very hard when I land, and I can see how if I'm doing a lot of hard jumping and landing, not as forgiving on my joints, and just doesn't feel as great. So after going over the pros and cons of these sneakers, I'm gonna give my overall rating of these shoes. Out of five points or five stars, I would give these shoes a three and a half out of five. Just a little above average. So are these sneakers worth it? I would give it a more definitive yes if you can get these on sale for 40 to 50% off. These typically retail for I believe $100 to $120 depending on the colorway. Again, I was lucky enough to get them on Black Friday for 50% off, so a much more worthwhile for that price anyway. In my opinion, these are at most worth 70 bucks. So unless Puma cuts me a check, then I would say yes, these are worth $120. Just kidding. But again, in terms of aesthetics, I'm really digging how it looks. I'm digging the silhouette and this color blocking here. I really like how it felt with the four foot traction and the reinforcement with lateral movements. And in my opinion, for a good price, these look really fresh on court. Otherwise, aside from those things, you're pretty much getting very average technology and cushioning. So I'm actually really curious to see what Puma has in store for basketball in the upcoming future. As you know, Puma's been making some pretty big moves lately, at least with the uh, J. Cole collaboration and the RS Dreamer sneaker. You have the recent signing of LaMelo Ball. I'm really excited to see how this NBA season and Puma is gonna pan out over this next coming year. Let me know in the comments below, what are your guys' thoughts on Puma basketball? What are your guys' thoughts on these sneakers right here? Sound off in the comments below. If you have any other questions about these sneakers, don't hesitate to reach out and I'll help you the best I can. If you found this review helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. It'll really help me out a lot. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel because I make content based on style, sneakers, and science. With that being said, take the time to check out my two previous videos here and here. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.